everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Feminine Moment. I am Cherry Lynn, and I am joined with Dixie Andalyn Forsythe. Hi, Dixie. Hi, Cherry. Hi. Um, Dixie is the daughter of Helen B. Andalyn, and Dixie is also the author of Fascinating Womanhood for the Timeless Woman. And we're excited to be here today to do a special episode for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Dixie's going to share with us some of her most fond memories of her mother, Helen B. Andalyn. Who is your grandmother? Who is my grandmother? <laughs> yeah, so you remember her too. Yes. Not the way I do because she raised me from a baby. But she was really a unique, an, a unique person. I just returned from a sister's reunion we have every year in Santa Barbara, California, where we're from. And uh, we, we talked about um, memories of her. And we, we each remember some things a little differently. But one of the things that we remember that's the same is um, how she was, um, she always made homemade bread. Uh, she, she did it all the time. And we often came home from school to the smell of this bread cooking. So amazing. Mm -hmm. She, we lived in California, like I said. So there was a time when our dad had a orange grove and we got bushels of oranges and she had this juicer and she squeezed fresh orange juice every day. She was an incredible seamstress. Uh, not everybody can do this, but she um, could so she had the ability. It was just the way her brain was wired to sew without a pattern. I can sew, but I cannot sew Amazing. with nothing. When yeah. she was a little girl, she used to tell us a story about how her mother had to go help someone who was in need, and she had to leave for a few hours. And she, um, my mom asked her, what can I do while you're gone? And she said, make a dress. And my mother was, um, I think about six years old. <laughs> so something. She got out some fabric and gave it to her and then she left. Mm -hmm. My mom thought, well, she thought my mother has such confidence in me. I guess I can do it. <laughs> she, laid out, she laid out this fabric and she cut out this dress. She put a dress that she already had on top of it so she could kind of tell the outline. And then she, she knew enough to cut it bigger and not cut, because you have to have seams. And she actually wore the dress to school. It was good enough that she wore it. Wow, I don't think I, I wish, know anybody else that can do that. I wish like, she well, she, the family made, out. she made my wedding dress from a picture I tore out of a magazine. I mean, that's pretty spoiled because I, I didn't realize until – I grew up and had kids that um, how unique of a talent that was. I, yeah. you know, I said, here, this is what I'd like for my wedding dress. And she, she sewed it and it was perfect yeah. and it was, it was not funny. easy. Yeah, no, I, I can't imagine. I don't think I could do that. Yeah. I don't want to sew, but I don't think I could ever Another do thing she was really good at is she told bedtime stories. Mm -hmm. And nowadays so many uh, kids watch movies and videos and things, which are fine, but she told bedtime stories, not even reading them, because some of them were passed down, down, passed down through her family. Mm -hmm. And she told us these stories, and so she elaborated them as she told them. So they, you know, they weren't exactly the same every single time. And yeah, yeah. So we, we I don't think I think that's kind of a lost. Um, I, that's a lost art is telling your own stories. I have I haven't really ever heard that, and I remember you telling me stories when I was a kid. But um, how did you do that? How did you come up? Were they stories that you remember? Those were the those were the stories that were told to me. You got the same ones. Because otherwise, how would you? If you were somebody that said, "Oh, I think I might want to start that," would you just have to make up a story, or would well, you, you could uh, you could originally they were probably written down somewhere and they just yeah. told them from memory. And a lot of things are passed on down family to family, word of mouth. My mother said they were pioneer stories. People mm -hmm. from a long, long time ago, probably from Europe that they originated from. And because our families from, you know, like a lot of Americans were from a lot of different countries. In Europe. So yeah. not just one. Yeah. So uh, some of the European countries had stories and they probably got, because they were passed down, they probably got changed. Uh, yeah. As, as I love that though. I love that. I mean, books are wonderful, but I love that idea of more engagement with your with your daughter or your son when you're putting them to bed and telling them a story it's you have more engagement if you're looking at them and telling them a story versus yeah the book. Well, you you experienced um your dad bob 
he he did the opposite. He made up a story, and the kids liked it so much they made it. They wrote it down. Yeah. yeah. So that that's probably how some of the original stories happened, anyway. Yeah. Someone told it. That. That, I think that's you're encouraging a little bit more creativity too. I like that. But my mother sewed a lot. Now she, I asked her when she was older, uh, uh, what what did you love to do? What were your hobbies? And mm -hmm. she kind of thought a minute. She said, I didn't really have time. For hobbies and I said well what about sewing and she said I would have liked it if I'd had more time and she I was said, always really busy and I said what about cooking I would have liked it if I had more time but she did years ago do some watercolor paintings and those oh are, I didn't I didn't either those are so priceless because there's so few of them that she ever did mm -hmm. uh, my youngest sister your aunt Marilee has two that are I think are really treasured they're little. They're like this big and little oh, frames. She has okay. them on the wall, and uh, she she did that when uh, well before FW, and that kind yeah. of consumed her uh, from then on. But she did do some uh, watercolor paint. But she sewed. She was um, another thing she did that I always really appreciated is there was if something really meant a lot to us. And she could tell that it did, not just kids saying, I want this. Mm -hmm. There was, there, years ago, there was a pair of shoes that I really just fell in love with. They were in the store window, and I wanted them so bad, and they seemed really expensive. They were all leather. And I remember them being kind of like gladiator shoes. They had a strap around the ankle. They were flat. Mm -hmm. They were sandals. And I, they weren't a necessity at all. I just really loved them and wanted them. And she went in and bought them for me because I liked them so much, not because I needed them or anything. She just knew that she didn't want me to have remembered them my whole life and have never had them. And she said it stemmed from her as a little girl seeing this hat in a window. She's just little and she could describe it. I think she said it was yellow and had these flowers on it. And it was the depression and her mother couldn't afford it for it. And she thought about that hat all of her life periodically mm -hmm. and wished she could have had that little hat. And she must have not been more than five or six years old, but she never forgot it. And so she said that she wished that she thought it's, if you can do it, if your child wants something really bad and you can tell it do, it's not just, it's not just a toy or something. Not just a toy that they just see and then they're going to forget about it tonight. You know, that kind of a thing. And then she would go out of her way to do it. And mm -hmm. I wore those shoes till they wore out. I wish and I still had them. <laughs> I wish I still had them because I, I, and it meant even more to me because I didn't need them. They were, um, they were just because she knew I liked them. Yeah. No, I love that. Um, yeah. One of the things you touched on earlier with the bread I don't have a ton of memories being the youngest uh, of grandma, but uh, one of the main memories that I have is walking into her home and it always smelled like bread. Always. There's Isn't that never, interesting? Because she was there. I walked into her house and it didn't smell like fresh bread. Even if she wasn't making it that day, it still smelled that way. And I associate <laughs> that smell with her. She baked it so much it was into the walls. I yeah. Guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, because... That I can still smell that bread. I still yeah, use that exactly. recipe, and mm -hmm. and, oh and sometimes she would take, she'd make extra dough, and she'd take parts of the dough and she'd roll them super flat, um, really flat, like mm -hmm. flatter, like flat as a tortilla or more, mm -hmm. and then she'd put them on a dry pan, frying pan with no oil or anything, mm -hmm. and then cook it like a tortilla. And it would kind of remember they would get bubbles in the middle, mm -hmm. and then she big ones like this big, and then she uh, give it to us and spread uh, butter on it, and maybe squeeze a little honey mm -hmm. for after school snack, and that was so good. I, yeah, that's fabulous. I think she thought, oh, the kids are going to come home, they're going to be hungry, the bread isn't going to be yeah. done, so I'll make. She called them tostadas, but she grew up in Arizona. <laughs> Her father spoke fluent Spanish because there was a lot of Mexican um, workers and things. That, and he, at one time, he um, herded sheep. And so he worked with Mex and Mexicans, and they had some of the best food. And so she learned to make tamales 
mm-hmm. and enchiladas and things from the the local people there. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, my dad had really bad um, heartburn and couldn't eat a lot of it. But she she loved it so much. She still made it and for her and us, and she'd make my dad something else. She, I love that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think another thing I remember about her is that she always was so glamorous. <laughs> yeah, she always was so polished. Yes, and so put together all the time. I never saw her kind of like having a bad day appearance wise. Like she, uh, she never wore pizza clothes ever. Never. I don't think she owned <laughs> them. In fact, uh, she wore. Now she wasn't alone in this. A lot of women, people used to dress up more. Mm-hmm. And now, by comparison, people are totally slobs. I mean, she would wear to the grocery store. She would wear, like, kitten heels, not stilettos or anything, mm-hmm. but, like, mm-hmm. short heels. She wore gloves. And gloves were more short gloves. Mm-hmm. And she, oh, earrings. Uh, actually, are you wearing her earrings? I'm wearing her earrings. <laughs> yeah, there's some of her earrings right there. Yeah, they're, I remember they're those. Clip-on. They're clip-on, which I actually yeah. like because I'm allergic to a lot of metals. And I stuff. don't I think she had pierced ears. I don't think she did. I cherish yeah, well, them. I don't wear them very often, um, but they're one of the only things that I have from her. Yeah, and I don't have any of her earrings. I have a ring of hers, <laughs> which I forgot to wear. But because I don't want, I was cooking earlier, and I don't want it to get all messed up, but uh, she was an extraordinary person and she would remember there were eight of us kids and she would tenderly and patiently stay up and get up all night long when we were sick and um, help us. Uh, you know, like she'd come and uh, give us medicine or when we were nauseated, she liked to give us uh, just a tablespoon of peach syrup from a can of peaches. Mm-hmm. She said that settle your stomach, and so she'd get up every hour and give us one tablespoon to help settle our stomach. Now, I don't know. Maybe it was. The, I think it's probably if it worked, it was probably the sugar in it, the syrup that kind of helped. Just a tablespoon at a time. Mm-hmm. She was enough of a health nut that was really special. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about her health? Her oh, health she health. was a major health nut. She was. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people know how healthy she was. She wasn't a hippie, but she was into stuff that hippies were into later. Like she She was was working out before working out was a thing. Yeah, and she was into um, sprouts. She always grew sprouts. Mm -hmm. She made whole wheat bread. She ground her own flour. I got teased at school if I brought a whole wheat sandwich because people didn't have whole wheat homemade bread. Then I know it sounds weird now, but they brown bread. Yeah, kids used to ask, what is that, dog food? You know, and it was really embarrassing. Yeah. But I, I loved it. And she she exercised, and she was into organic foods and all yeah. that. Before, it was cool. Mm-hmm. She, she totally, she's like a closet hippie or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she she did. And she she uh, grew her own wheatgrass. And, um, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, she juiced. All the time. Yes, I remember the juicing. Yeah. Carrot juice, um, beet juice. Sometimes she made this drink called green drink that now you can actually buy in a store. I think, I think I'm not buying that stuff. I <laughs> have. It's, yeah. I'm sure it's delicious, but I thought green drink. No, I mean, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't bad. She put pineapple juice in it and spin. What made it green is I think, uh, carrot tops and spinach. And mm-hmm. stuff. She put carrot tops in it, and she put nuts that were ground up in there too. Well, I admire that she did it not just for the waistline portion of it. She didn't. No. She didn't eat that way because she was trying to just be thin and work on her appearance. She did it because she wholeheartedly cared about health. Well, yeah, I should have mentioned that when she was growing up. I mean, it was the opposite. Her family. Someone in her family owned a candy factory, and they oh, had yeah. lots of sugar. And she, as a, even as a young girl, she thought this isn't good. You know, this isn't really good for you. Her father, my grandfather, used to sprinkle sugar on his jam as though it wasn't sweet enough. And she thought this isn't good. And her father was a dentist, <laughs> I believe. So, <laughs> you know, so she, on her own, she thought this doesn't seem right. So she started, excuse me, studying nutrition. And she thought, you shouldn't eat all this refined sugar. So she started studying, and that's why she became kind of a health nut. And she was the rest of her life. Mm-hmm. And when I was uh, grown, after I had, I think, 
several, two or three kids. I was in the kitchen one day and my dad was sitting at the table and I heard him say to her, I don't think he knew I was there. He said, Helen, is it okay if I don't eat broccoli anymore? Do I have to pretend I like it? <laughs> are grown? And I thought, wait a minute. He never <laughs> liked it. He just ate it to be a good example. So. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, this has been really fun. And um, thank you for sharing so much. I feel like I learned a lot of things, too, that I didn't know, which is great. And I hope everyone uh, watching uh, had fun listening to you talk about your memories. And and even if you don't have the best relationship with your mother, or some people don't, mm -hmm. you can always appreciate that your mother um, went through labor and delivery to get you here. And it's not easy. Women have given birth to every single person who has ever been born including Napoleon and all the kings of Europe and everything. Women have given birth and raised almost all the people that have ever been born here. So it's great to honor them. That's right. And happy Mother's Day to everyone out there that's watching. If you guys um, out there are, are watching this on Mother's Day, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And um, I think... And, th and those of you who haven't had a child yet or can't or whatever... Women are also the world's nurturers. And women who haven't had a baby also nurture. They nurture each other. They nurture other people's children. They nurture their friends and family. Yes. So women, women provide great nurturing to this world, too. Very well said. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.